This has been a long time coming. A support spec is finally coming to World of Warcraft after literally decades of people wanting them. And honestly, now that we've looked into it, I am a lot more excited for this than I thought I would be. So, the Augmentation Evoker, or as we call it, the Augvoker, could be a sign of massively improved gameplay over the next few years for World of Warcraft. Or, it could launch, no one will play it, it goes boom, and the supports are dead, meaning we never get the Bard or the Tinker. Which is it going to be? That is the mission of today. I'll start with the verdict on Ogvoker itself. It is an amazing step toward support specs. It is a brilliant blueprint for future classes and specs doing the same sort of thing, and it might even be a crazy good way to fix one of WoW's longest running problems, DPS always being more important than anything else. Uh, but there's, there is a but. There are a dozen ways on Blizzard's end where this could go wrong. And even using the Evoker itself for this may be a little bit funky, but we'll get to that. Now, the first thing to say is that this is still a DPS. It just has a lot of support elements woven through its abilities. The easiest way to describe it is Devastation Evoker, but a lot less complicated. So like the other specs, it's all about using the empowered abilities on cooldown, dumping essences into spenders, and then filling with either Living Flame or Azure Strike. And then, of course, the crazy interactions between all of those. And what makes it an actual support spec is all those interactions and a few new key spells. Ebon Might is the core of the spec. It gives a ton of primary stat, a portion of your own, to four allies for 10 seconds on a 30 second cooldown. And the name of the game is to extend this buff as long as you can. You've got a couple of ways to do this. A few are just seconds being added anytime you use an empowered spell. So either Fire Breath or your new one called Upheaval. These also trigger your mastery, which gives extra versatility to two allies when cast. Their Essence Spender, Eruption, is probably the best way to extend Ebb and Might. And like the other specs, they of course have Essence Burst to proc free casts of this. The last way then is Breath of Aeons, which is basically a time-infused version of Deep Breath that also has its own thing. Enemies hit with it get Temporal Wounds, and those wounds collect 20% of the damage that your Ebon Might buffed allies do to uh, the mob for a bit, and at the end, it pops, shielding allies for that damage when talented as well. Pretty neat. So you can immediately see the theme here, right? You do simple DPS, rotation, but everything you're doing juggles up that buff. You want to make sure that people are doing their own jobs way better, and that buff helps them do that. That is the meat of this spec, which seems simple enough, but that's like only 30% of what they do. Their DPS is simple on purpose to keep the rest of their abilities able to fulfill that long-awaited support fantasy. Like with Prescience, a buff that you can drop on an ally to give them crit chance. This has a 20 second duration on a 12 second cooldown, so it's an active part of the rotation. Uh, with talents, it can proc Essence Burst and even add a 15% damage and healing Echo proc. So if you notice like a super geared out player in your group absolutely pumping, keeping this in them will be a really big help to your team. And it's not just DPS that they buff. They have tank and healing specific things as well. Blistering Scales puts 15 stacks of a buff on a target, granting them armor. And each time they take melee damage, uh, it bursts a stack and uh, it does some AoE. A talent can upgrade this so it also adds a shield to the tank when it's applied. They also have got a threat reduction ability that they can put on a DPS, so that's technically a tank buff if you really think about it. And for healers, they have crazy ways to help. The biggest is Spatial Paradox. It, it's Spirit Walker's Grace and Rule of Law combined. You and your healer can cast while moving and your spells have double range. Oh, that, as a healer, makes me real happy. That might be something I can call on. Um, then, there's all your own off-healing. So, of course, all of Ochres have Emerald Blossom, which for DPS is just a nice little AoE off-heal on a cooldown. But not for Ogvoker, because with talents, it can be changed. First, it can add a 6% healing taken buff to everyone it hits. Then, there's a choice talent after that. Either that buff can be extended the same way that Ebon Might can be extended, or Emerald Blossom can be swapped into your core rotation, where instead of a cooldown, it costs Essence, is buffed, and extends Ebon Might, which basically means you can throw in being a full-on off-healer while keeping DPS players buffed with the right build. And that's cool. And I'm not even done yet. There are a few more real sick support mechanisms. 
One of their capstones spawns orbs for allies to pick up that reduces their major cooldowns by 10 seconds. Another talent makes Fire Breath buff allies with extra fire damage, a bit like the old Flame Tongue Totem, and they even have an AoE stun as a part of the rotation. Uh, upheaval sends enemies up into the air for a bit, and a talent changes their route, Landslide, to actually slam mid-air enemies and stun them. That's cool. There's also some stance dancing. They have two party-wide attunements. The black flight one is 5% HP, the bronze flight one is 10% move speed, and you can just swap them at will. Oh, and last, but absolutely not least, bestow Wernstone. You and your target get a Wernstone, right? And you can use that Wernstone, either of you, to teleport to each other, and it's got a 100-yard range, and you can use it while you're casting. So not only is it strong, but I think we can all imagine times where this goes very right, and also hilarious times where it goes very wrong. Uh, remember that. Uh, while they have all of this in their spec tree, of course they're still evokers. They still bring Bloodlust, Rescue, Verdant Embrace, Zephyr, Time Spiral, and all of their CC. This may seem like a lot, but the key is just how simple the base rotation is. You only have a few cooldowns, it's uh, a spender and a builder, that's really it. You don't have to worry about targeting allies with loads of your buffs. Blizzard have taken extra care to ensure that you can just blast your enemy and your buffs will auto-target the appropriate people unless you personally want to micromanage that. Believe it or not, they don't even have a separate AoE rotation where their spender, Eruption, basically just auto-adjusts to be single target or AoE depending on like your, your situation. So when you're playing, you're not sitting there thinking about, you know, oh, how will I do more damage? That's easy. You're thinking about how can I use my toolkit to help my team? Or at the very least, how can I extend my buffs more? And while that's not a type of gameplay for everyone, it does lean into, I think, one of WoW's strongest gameplay fantasies, and maybe even a unique selling point in the market, and that is that utility is often way more fun than doing raw DPS. And if you think about how uh, solo play used to work in vanilla, I think you can really see how ingrained it is to WoW's DNA. They just kind of forgot that for a long time. So that's how the spec plays. It's a simple version of Devastation Evoker with a massive amount of amazing utility and a huge focus on buffing everyone else's DPS, sometimes even tanking and healing. But it ain't all sunshine and roses. This is obviously a massive gamble from Blizz, and it's going to have a serious impact in the future of the game. If this goes well, I think this will mean support specs are on the cards. If this goes wrong, it could kill the idea of a support spec forever. So let's talk about issues and fears. First, the meta. So Ogvoker does abysmal damage by itself. It gives so much damage to allies that there's barely enough budget for it to do more damage than a tank. So it's kind of half a DPS when you look at the meters. How's that going to play out when people just look at the bottom of the Warcraft logs chart, say that it's off-meta garbage, and then none of them get invited to anything other, uh, then, oh, supports are dead, they never get off the ground, and everyone is sad. And that's where we've got to talk about numbers. But just for a sec. So, Warcraft logs and details show one number, and that number is raw DPS. However, FF logs, ran by the same team, actually shows four different DPS numbers, because that game also has damage buffs. Uh, the one that you need to look at is called RDPS, that's called Raid Contributing DPS, and this includes damage that you gave to other players by giving them buffs, but it takes out the damage that you did from being buffed. So, let's say a monk does 110 DPS, and the buffs that the Ogvoker gave them uh, contributed 10 of those DPS, while the Ogvoker themselves is doing 80 DPS. Details in Warcraft logs would just show 110 and 80, which obviously looks bad for the Ogvoker. But the RDPS number would show 190, because 10 of that DPS was actually from the Evoker. That's the actual contribution of damage. So basically, our DPS is a far more useful and accurate metric that would cut through a lot of the annoying meta trash that could happen. So with how WoW calculates damage, this is going to be effectively impossible for add-ons to do, and that means the Blizzard needs a solution. And thankfully, they know that. They have one. They mentioned that they'll be updating combat logging to properly display how much damage is coming from buffs, but they recently said it won't be 100% complete for 10.1.5. Most of it will be there, but not all. 
Now, it's going to be very important that details and Warcraft logs make the necessary changes to show RDPS or something similar by default, because otherwise this spec will have a miserable experience. So, look, that's just something to look out for when this patch launches in a few weeks. Hopefully it works out, and certainly you could maybe assume that Blizzard are putting this spec out relatively early because they want to iron out all the kinks before Season 3 starts and there's a new raid. So maybe with the 1.5 patch and then the 1.7 patch and then 10.2, uh, through all of those, maybe the combat logging will be in the place that it needs to be by the next time that it truly matters. A second fear then that we had coming into this video is that maybe Evoker isn't the most popular thing in the world, but then actually you just look at the parse counts and the Mythic Plus participation, and while the data is not perfect, it does actually look like loads of players have taken to Evoker and enjoyed it. So that's less of a concern. Obviously in one way, uh, the fact that they've been meta for a bit could explain that, but uh, yeah, it's the second and fourth most played DPS in normal and heroic Abaris in the last two weeks. So uh, player number wise, I think Blizzard will be just fine. There are plenty of characters eligible to just do this at endgame. Now the reason for the fear is that the Evoker is a bit complicated for the more casual players, and that means that their first big push into support actually may not reach the audience that it wants. People who want to sit back and let their sweat lord friends do the serious damage while they just help them out. But as I've been saying, Augmentation is intentionally a lot less complicated, and the class is already popular, so actually that should be fine. And that's basically the two potential issues that are out there. Blizzard are clearly very aware of them, and they've got measures in place to prevent them. So, that's good. There are a few other things, though, like, um, you know, these could be so good that you need two or more of them in Mythic Progression. To some people, that could be an issue. Um, honestly, I don't think it's the most important issue compared to just making sure the spec is actually something that people enjoy. And now for the bright side. So, support specs in WoW. Bard, Tinker, anything else you can think of. Maybe a new spec for another class that already exists in the game. Who knows? Uh, all these things are possible if this goes well. There are so many options for spec and class fantasy, and that is exciting. It's also exciting to see such a simple DPS rotation for a spec. Um, you know, with Frost Mage maybe being a bit more complex in Time One Five, and Demon Hunters going from four buttons to John Madden within the span of this expansion, it's uh, you know it's not really been a super easy spec for people to play and still perform well with. And maybe Ogvoker being a simple DPS with a bunch of utility may actually open up uh, a part of the game to people who are okay with doing low personal DPS, but actually would enjoy helping significantly on damage with buffs or maybe helping with off healing. It could also theoretically allow for a range of intentionally easy and hard specs to coexist, kind of like how FF14 goes. Dancer is a good addition to the group because of raid buffs and utility, but alone they do pitiful damage. So having a full group of them would be stupid. Uh, pair them with a samurai or a monk, and uh, both the, you know, the sweaty melee and the chill ranged can just coexist and help each other out, and that really works. Finally then, the emphasis on utility and support has been the biggest upgrade to Dragonflight's design. Using proper non-combat, like non-damage spells even, to make life easier to counter mechanics in dungeons and raids has been really fun, and a massive change from just doing boss mechanics and maxing DPS and that being it. So all of this is to say, the potential here is humongous for this to be a win. Blizzard have done almost everything right in the run-up to release, including how the story of the Drakthir and Adam and Thea has led up to this spec's release. So honestly, excellent work. I am excited to give this a try on live, and I really hope this heralds a new beautiful future where we can finally get our bards, our tinkers, our full support shamans, and anything else in between that your imagination could think of. So let me know, are you going to give this one a try? Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.